Big Orgs are coming back to Halo and we're going to take a look at one of the very first matchups between two legendary teams, Sentinels and Cloud9. This match was a throwback to an early esports arena 1k. What's up everyone, this is Callus, and in this episode we're going to look at how Sentinels dominated this Truth CTF game. Let's check out how the first flag capture went down from Snakebite's point of view and then we'll hit the analysis. Go oh, Trav, don't go, don't go. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna base, I'm gonna base, I'm gonna base. You know where under is going? Under base. It's, it's down on their lift. There's two their flag. It's down on their lift. Their card or? Card or in their flag, bro. Matt's, yo, careful. We're gonna be blocking, bro. Might spawn P. Yeah, they might spawn P. Last guy, last guy. Last guy. Uh, spawn car, spawn car. One hit their card or? One hit card, one hit their card or? Nice, bro. No, they're not in their flag. Card, top card, top card. Last guy, top card. Last guy, top card, Matt. He's car yeah, one, car one on me. I'm He's our card uh, one. Our car. Right now, He's car one, guys. Eco. Eco went at car one. Eco went at car one. Another one inside bottom, guys. About a minute into the game, we see Sentinel set up what I like to call an L on the map, forcing a bubble spawn trap by having pink side control and flooding the enemy base from the bottom and the top while Royal 2 patiently plays car 1 to bait the enemy bubble spawns. Immediately after Sentinels gets their first slay to create a 4v3 numbers advantage, Snakebite wastes no time going for a flag pull, yet he is forced to pull the flag into Cloud9's bottom base as the pressure from the bubble spawn trap came full force. Snakebite recognizes that Royal 2 is playing the car lane of the map and calls out that Cloud9 might begin to spawn on the pink side of the map due to Royal 2's pressure on the car side. Royal 2 distances himself from the car bubble to help perpetuate the car bubble spawn trap while Frosty attempts to continue the flag run through the pink side of the map. This seemingly small play from Royal 2 allowed most of Cloud9 to continue to spawn in the bubble. Due to Royalty managing to stay alive, he helped influence Snakebite to have a favorable car lane spawn on the Sentinel's bubble. This gave Snakebite the opportunity to deal damage to the bubble trapped Cloud9 members instantly. This was almost a perfect adaptation by Sentinels as they managed to keep three fourths of Cloud9 contained in the bubble spawn trap. Flag capture number one in the bag. It took Sentinels about 5 minutes to be able to finally execute a second flag capture after a few missed flag cap opportunities and this one started off with my favorite setup in Halo, what I call the U setup. If you're wondering what the U setup is, click right here for a more detailed video. This setup essentially forces the enemy to spawn inside their base, top or bottom, as both perimeters are blocked. There are some split spawns you need to be aware of. They can spawn in front of the base on the car side and actually inside the car bubble next to you, but that's an easy back smack if you're aware of it. This time it's Neptune playing the car lane of the map and by blocking the bubble he is able to get great angles to see inside the enemy base. And as soon as Snakebite gets a second slay, Neptune does a great job breaking the U into an L by leaving the car bubble and committing for the flag pull. Now the car bubble spawn trap is open and the only thing Sentinels need to consider is the bottom base split spawns, but Royal 2 is already on it as he leaves top middle to flank the basement spawns from behind. This buys Neptune enough time to secure the second flag cap. Sentinels got back to business just 90 seconds later and made a scrappy play develop even after losing Snakebite with Camo. Buckle up, it's about to get wild. Royal 2 double teams Stellar with Neptune's help, then he regains his shields while holding Pink Tower and he quickly recognizes that he can do the most for his team by playing the middle lane as Neptune has the pink lane under control. I call this role the middle player. You might also know this as the flex player in other FPSs and in my opinion, this player has one of the most difficult roles as they have to decide which group of players to help. So should Royal 2 play the 4v2 advantage and focus on the flag pull here while ignoring the enemy on his side of the map, letting Frosty take care of Eco alone? This would have been a good choice for timing, but why not help both? Royal 2 rotates to the top middle of the map where he can simultaneously help Frosty and be in the field of play to help with the flag. Narrowly missing Stellar for the cleanup, yet hitting Penguin with a perfect 5 while continuing to rotate aggressively into the enemy base. Royal 2 manages to live while being one shot while Frosty instantly gets into the field of play to bait him. In my opinion, Renegade made a huge misplay by retracting all the way back to his own base to chase Royal 2, falling for the bait and causing a lot of timing and map control loss with his rotation and death. Now the rest of Sentinels has respawned and have thrown on their Nikes to sprint and fly into the enemy base creating another L on the map to force a car bubble spawn trap. Having Royal 2 already in the bottom of the Cloud9 base cancels out the basement split spawn opportunities so Sentinels knows to expect this car bubble spawn. 
due to having a big numbers advantage, Neptune makes an incredibly disciplined macro play to rotate back to his own base, trusting his teammates to get the flagpole in order to gain timing on the Cloud9 cutoffs. This is the final flag capture, so Cloud9 has to commit to either stopping the flag or creating a flag standoff by pulling the Sentinel's flag as a flag capture can't happen if a team's own flag is pulled. Neptune gets into a fair 1v1 with Renegade and comes out on top. He then quickly recognizes to help the center of the map to clean up a double and then instantly knows to look to his left to continue watching the cutoffs from the car lane. Neptune goes down, but at this point he has already done his job and bought his team enough time to capture the final flag. Over Overall, this was a great series to watch and it gives us a little taste of what is to come when Halo Infinite Esports is in full swing. We have to give a big shout out to Lights who helped edit this video, check out the description for his channels, he makes his own Halo content and it's definitely worth a look, check it out! We hope you enjoyed this video, if you did let us know in the comment section below, support us by smashing that like button, extra points if you binge watch more of our videos, and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next episode of Tactics, and until next time, peace.